tell me how this all happened. I met Charlie, and um, things were going good. My mother and father didn't really like him. Right. And um, the first time he ever mentioned, you know, that he wanted to kill my parents was, you know, after Christmas, that he gave me a ring, proposed to me, and my parents, you know, didn't want us to. And it was a promise ring, not an engagement yes. ring, right? Yes, all right, Chase, what do you got? This is a, a, a great way to start this off. Uh, Greg uh, picked this clip. And I, I think it's wonderful that we're seeing from the, kind of the outset of this interview that Dr. Phil's matching her behavior. He's leaned forward. His hands are under the table, just like hers are. And he doesn't ask her a question. He gives her a command. He says, tell me how this all happened. And this is something that I tend to do in an interrogation room where I'm testing the compliance status or where that person is from on a compliance standpoint. And he gets a, a wonderful compliance from her. And I think he's careful not to use the word but in here. So he uses the word and instead of but, which is a wonderful tool for anybody that's uh, communicating. Uh, when she's saying kill and parents, I think she's forcing those words out. I'm sure you guys will talk about that and what that means. But I want to give you a quick fact about psychopaths. They are clinically proven not to be better at deception than the average person. They do it more often, but that doesn't make them better at it. There are technically, there's five studies that say that they're better at verbal deception only, but once a nonverbal component is introduced or a polygraph, they do just about the same as everybody else. And you'll see where this is going here in the next few videos. Scott? All right. Yeah, this is, this is an excellent example of a psychopath. Everybody's always asking about him. This is a wonderful one. So, because uh, what we're seeing is she's totally trying, she's trying to totally control her demeanor and her delivery with everything. And she's controlling, she's trying to deliver and show what she thinks a normal person looks like, what, what that normal behavior would be. But just by watching her, we know automatically something's not right here. That little feeling you get inside in your gut that's telling you everything. You're not quite sure what it is yet. We're going to explain it to you why you feel that way. But you know something's wrong. So that that control makes her talk at a specific volume. As we go through this, her baseline is this. When she's being getting nailed for telling a lie and she doesn't want to say what it is, she always doesn't say it. She she doesn't she'll move her mouth, but she won't say the words out loud. She whispers them. So that that goes all the way down to it's reminiscent of being a child and getting in trouble. When you get in trouble, you get real quiet and you don't say a whole lot because you don't know what's going to happen and you don't know how much to say. Um, and and her face is expressionless. She's We're going to see some great examples of where she mimics what she's heard other people say and use the expressions and the, the fake excitement that she's seen other people use. This is perfect for that. Again, I'm going to grab some stuff out of here and use it in training as well. Um so it, the the tone of her voice and, and the volume of her voice lets us know she's controlling that output and, and to what she believes is the right output to give in this situation. She's trying to seem respectful. She's trying to talk quiet to Dr. Phil. And he's, you know, in person, he's a pretty big guy. You know, he's a tall guy. And so that girl doesn't, doesn't look, I don't know how tall she is, but with the pictures of seeing her dad, then having seen her dad walk out on that show. I don't think he's very tall, so he's almost towering over. But it, we'll see him at some point scooch down to, to get on eye level with her, which is a great move. Um, the little smile she shows, it's sort of the um, a fake joy to, to prove she has a, a proof of acceptance, in other words. So it, it shows that she's... Um, She's smiling and she's hoping to be accepted. It's almost like the a request for approval situation we have there. But that little smile we see, that's what, that's what her joy of proof of acceptance says she talks about that. So, uh, Greg, what do you got? So a couple of things. Um, yes, psychopaths are a couple of things we know about psychopaths as well. Now I'll, I'll quote a study uh, or a time frame. 2018, Cardiff and Swansea Universities did a study. And the one thing that they found interesting is that pupil dilation, which we do when we see a good thing or when we see a dangerous thing, only occurs in psychopaths when they see good things or whatever makes them happy. When there's fear, a fear-inducing thing, no dilation. That's an interesting thing. 
Watch this girl's eyes throughout all this stress. Watch her pupils. I kept looking for it. Like, hey, hopefully there's some pinpointing and dot. Nope, nothing. That's number one. She sat. There are a couple things here that I'm going to point out. And one of them that I find really interesting is the smile. But she's braced. She's leaned in that chair. She's got her feet against the legs of the chair. She's got her arms between and under the table so she can move her hands without you seeing them. And she makes eye lock. We'd usually call the romancer. I'll call this the creeper. This is There's nothing. She's not paying positive attention to you. She's paying all attention to you. And she's focused on him like crazy. I always say the organism does what made the organism successful. This girl, this has been what she's done with her parents, what she's done with authority, the yes, sir. She's doing front of the mouth talking. And I don't use this very often on here, but when people are being contrite, that front of the mouth talking, when they're angry, the back of the mouth talking, the power, listen to it. She's contrite. She's trying to make him fall for whatever it is she does. Now, I'm also going to tell you that people can rationalize all kinds of things in their head. I've talked to terrorists who rationalize what they've done or to bad guys who rationalize what they've done because they feel like they're justified in doing it. Might be some of that going on in this girl's head. Don't know. I'm not trying to put in their head what's there. But there, I feel when I'm sitting across the table from somebody like this, I feel a facade because it's locked down. It's tight. Everything's gripped. Her body language is all controlled. And usually when I see that, there's a lot of something boiling inside that person I'm talking to. So what you're trying to do is find that little facade crack every now and then. And I think that smile is a crack. I think that she is, when she is busted, she does it. We're going to see later in here a normal, there's one line of baseline for her with her friends in this place. When she says something later, like, I think we've already established that. That's her normal speech pattern. We're not going to see it any other time through here, I think. And I think she's locked down. She's eye locked. Her, bl uh, You know what her blink rate is on my page? Her blink rate is yesterday she blinked. <laughs> she hasn't blinked in this whole damn thing. The only time she blinks is for eye blocking. And very specifically, Chase, I love what you pointed out, she tells with emphasis, kill my parents. And when she does, she doesn't just do that. Her eyelids go, kill my parents parents watch it it is telling it's powerful and then as she talks about the guy was proposing to her her lips come forward in a condemning kind of a purse and then her eyes block again and then she talks about her boyfriend her chin rises slightly as if she's indignant sides of her mouth are down and that's anger and then that slight smile that slight smile at the promise ring that's all that is not congruent body language for i feel bad about what happened to my parents not one of us the, the emphasis is in all the wrong places, or as you would say in language, emphasis on the wrong syllable. That kind of thing always means something to me. So I see a, a mess. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so agree with everything that I've heard there. Let me add a few more things. Uh, when she talks about her parents didn't like him, we get a draw in of breath. Why do you draw air in? Because you're going to do something. There's going to be some action is going to happen, okay? Yet she doesn't move. She really is locked down there but we see the psychology of the parents didn't like him something had to be done okay so we see the action happening she doesn't move she's locked down sometimes people don't move very much because their prefrontal cortex is damaged in some way she's a pianist actually i <laughs> went found out uh she plays piano so her prefrontal cortex in terms of the 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 motor is is going to be pretty good so that's not why she's so still uh totally agree uh dr phil mirroring really well there clearly purposeful lowering his um um uh physical status uh as well a good technique to use there Oh, she's calm. The calmness is definitely hers. That's her personality, pretty dangerous personality, but the calm belongs to her. The voice and the demeanor, I would suggest throughout, is childlike. To, to Greg's point, that I believe is, is a persona that she puts on because it gets her what she wants. The more she acts like a child, the more compliance she gets from people uh, around her. Um, on proposed, uh, Greg, you said an eye block. I'm going to push that a little bit further. I think that is a blink of a slow blink of acceptance. And what it's to say is, and that's final. I think it's a slow blink of finality. This kind of personality deals with with final solutions, final ideas. He proposed, then it's done. 
the, the parents don't like that, well, we need a final solution around that then. So a great introduction in just in that, in that first short clip there. So much uh, going on. Uh, let's see what we've got uh, coming next. I'm done with that one. All right. What I think is funny here, guys, is this one, if you just look at it for face value, when people say, where is body language? A lot of people would just look and go, yeah, I'm not going to watch happening. that. There's nothing. <laughs> but when you really look, wow. Right. Well, the very fact that nothing's happening, she's not right. moving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Tell me how this all happened. I met Charlie and um, things were going good. My mother and father didn't really like him. Right. And um, the first time he ever mentioned, you know, that he wanted to kill my parents was, you know, after Christmas, that he had gave me a ring, proposed to me, and my parents, you know, didn't want us to. And it was a promise ring, not an engagement yes, ring, right? Yes, if you like this video, Get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.